Hallelujah. 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 More than enough. Some of us are experiencing more than enough troubles. <laughs> More than enough challenges and more than enough difficulties, more than enough stress. How many of you are with me? <laughs> I want you to say it with me, enough. Enough. God, enough. Davasta. When we come to God with our challenges and our troubles and our suffering, He becomes more than enough for us. And when He becomes more than enough for us, then we can smile and make the devil wonder what we're up to. So this morning, right now, I want you to just, whatever it is that's challenging you, whatever difficulty you're going through, whatever storm you may be experiences right now, whatever heartache, whatever concern right now, you have a Heavenly Father. We have a Heavenly Father. We can go to and say, you know what? Abba, Father, I'm done. You are more than enough for me. In every circumstance, in every situation, you are more than enough. And though my eyes don't see it, my ears don't hear it, though I may not feel it right now, I know that I know that in the middle of the storm, I am not alone. You are with me. So I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, team, for creating an environment for the Holy Spirit to speak into our hearts. If you may be seated, I am so glad today. I have one of the, um, it's one of the things that I enjoy the most, and it's baptisms when you go public with your faith, you know. You're telling the whole world, hey, I am a child of God. I have accepted Jesus as my Lord and Savior, and I want the whole world to to know. Amen? amen. A yeah, thank you, Ernesto. It's an amen right there. Amen. Today we start um, a new series. And I, I, have you ever wondered where the different phrases come from, you know? Uh, when life gives you lemons, or your husband drops lemons on you. Let's make lemonade. Now, in 1915, way before our time, a man by the name of Albert Hubert, he was, and Peachy does give me lemons a lot of times. But I make lemonade. He was a Christian writer. And he wrote an obituary. Now, most of us know what an obituary is, right? It's the announcement of someone's death. And it usually includes a short biographical date. I'm wondering what they'll say about you or me in our obituary. But anyway, he wrote an obituary. And he wrote an obituary about a man named Marshall Pinckney Wilder. Now, Wilder was a dwarf. He suffered from dwarfism and had quite a bit of physical disabilities. But he had become well-known and very wealthy. So... Hubert wrote this, um, I like to cut the ends up. I don't know why, don't ask me. I do like it. Makes it easier, I guess, to cut. And he wrote about Wilder in the obituary. He says, Wilder cashed in on his disabilities. He picked up the lemons that fate had sent him and started a lemonade stand. That's where the phrase, when life gives you lemon, you make a lemonade. That's where that phrase came back. It had to do with a man whose disabilities did not hold him back, but he used them as a springboard for his wealth and his success. 
Now, 33 years later, Dale Carnegie, most of you know Dale Carnegie, he went ahead and he made that phrase famous in his book, How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. You mean I need lemonades to start living? Well, some of us do. <laughs> but anyway, he wrote, if you have a lemon, make a lemonade. So it all started with that man. Today, we begin that series, When Life Gives You Lemons. Have you ever had a lemonade or a glass of lemonade on a very hot day? Yeah, how does that feel, right? Oh, man, I wouldn't want to be that lemon right now because I'm pushing really hard. I'm squeezing really hard. There's a lot of pressure there for what's coming on the other side. Juice, right? Man, oh, man, squeeze it. Look at that. Ugh. Sour. <coughs> bitter. Circumstances in our lives. Sour, bitter. Situations we go through. They make us grimace in pain. In lack of understanding. So that pressure and that suffering is just hitting us, right? But then we go ahead and we add water, right? And we're like, a little better, but not quite, right? What does it need? It needs sugar. Splenda for those who, I like uh, pure cane sugar. Actually, I don't usually use sugar. PG, this is PG's sugar. Some people use honey. You know, you put the sugar in. Okay, don't use the knife, but I will use the knife. PG, you have some ice there for me? Mm, mm, mm. Since you dropped the lemons on me, you're okay. When life gives you lemon, don't worry. You get your lemonade on your way out. We have enough for all of you. Right? I go in my life. No. You couldn't make lemon just with water. I'm going to throw something really at you that you're going to go like, what? I said, you cannot endure suffering, trials, and tribulations just with the Holy Spirit. What are you saying, PM? I say that the Holy Spirit is present 24-7, but unless you avail yourself and you dissolve yourself like the sugar that you are, in that Holy Spirit, you will not be sweet to the taste of God. We come to God. We share our trials, our tribulations, our sufferings. He said through his son Jesus Christ in John 14, I will not leave you alone. I will send you the Holy Spirit. He will comfort you, and he will guide you. So we have the Holy Spirit. Well, what happens? We have the Holy Spirit out here. We don't have him in here. We have the Holy Spirit out here saying that we're like, mm, I have a better idea. We need to immerse ourselves in the Holy Spirit. Allow him to guide us in our decisions, our actions. Allow him to to help us to make the decisions that will allow God to use the pressure of the suffering to squeeze out the best out of us. Scripture tells us about the tough times and what they can produce in us. In Romans chapter 5, Paul's letter to the church in Rome, he says, and we boast. You know what boasting is? Yeah. I got it. I got it. 
we boast in the hope of the glory of God. I love that sentence. Right? That's awesome, right? The hope, glory of God. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I got the glory of God. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm boasting. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. But then he says, not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings. What? Or it doesn't say, if we suffer, does it? Uh, It says what? In the sufferings. It means if you are a committed follower of Jesus, it is not a hunky-dory life. It's a life of challenges. It's a, it's a life of, of difficulties. Why? Because we're going contrary to the prince of this world. And he ain't happy that you have made the decision to live your life out the way that God intended it from the beginning. As a child of him in an intimate relationship with the father. So he's going to make it as difficult as possible for you to say, you know what, I'm giving up. But when the Holy Spirit is in you, when you follow the Holy Spirit, when you're guided by the Holy Spirit, you can make lemonade out of lemon. It says here, but we also glory in our sufferings because we know. It doesn't say we feel. Remember? It's very hard sometimes when you people, when, when, when you tell people, and they're, they're, you know, they're sad and they're all this. And you say, I'm so glad that feelings are not fact. But I'm feeling it. Yeah, but not necessarily a fact, is it? Just because you feel ugly doesn't mean you are ugly. Not because, not only, just because you feel like you can't do it doesn't mean you cannot do it. The fact may be that you could probably do it. All you have to do is try. So we have to do something about our feelings. Submit them to the word of God. How do we do that? We transform our mind. We transform our thoughts. So it becomes knowledge. We know, we know that suffering produces perseverance. Had it, any of you run a marathon? Yeah, we got Sister Carmen and she runs a marathon. Yes, I used to do the 5K. That's how I bust up my knee here in Bethlehem, you know, I realize the runners in marathon, they say sometimes runners hit a wall. Have you ever heard that? They hit a wall, right? Did you know that when runners hit a wall, it is not a physical thing? It's not a physical reaction. It's a mental, a mental reaction. Their brain says, stop, you can't go on. I was like, what? Your mind needs to be submitted to what God says about who you are, why you're here, and how you face challenges. We know that suffering produces perseverance. You're going to stick. You're going to keep on keeping on no matter what. You're going to pull through no matter what. Perseverance, character, And character, hope, and hope does not put us to shame. We glory in our sufferings. The word word of that suffering means pressure. Pressure. We applied pressure to the lemon and the juice came out, right? When life throws difficulties at us, we are pressured. And yes, lemon comes out, but you know what? That is sour. You begin to talk. Angrily, you begin to hate people, you begin to turn people out. You know, it's bitter, it's a process. You persevere, it says, you apply pressure when you have a deadline. Doesn't that motivate you to finish the task? That's a pressure, right? Um, When you have the pressure of a potential bad health. It you hopefully motivates you to eat better or exercise, right? There's a pressure on you. You, know, that you gotta do this, you gotta do this. So when you are experiencing sufferings in the walk, in the journey of faith, okay, that allows you to persevere, to endure, to keep on keeping on. And Paul says why? He says suffering produces perseverance, we become stronger, we go for the long run. We're not quitters. Persevering produces character. Like fire purifies gold. Do you know that gold is purified through fire? You do know that, right? 
You do know that. The best thing comes out, the best, pure, most expensive, most valuable, most worthwhile gold has to go through a very high intensity fire. The men and women of God who are going to be more like Christ-like will have to go through that fire, through that suffering, through that perseverance in order to be God-like, in order to be Christ-like, I should say, Christ-like in their character. It is through that perseverance that our character is purified and we're strengthened and we're formed and we become more and more like Jesus. Being strengthened in Christ, we can have hope. Hope that does not bring us shame because God will not fail us. How many times do you have hope into something and it doesn't come through and you're like embarrassed? They said they were going to be here. They said they would never leave me. They said they were going to take care of this for me. You will not ever be able to say that about God. Because God is a steadfast God. God is a God of the yes and amen. God is God the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God is an unchangeable, immutable God. God is the great I am. So you can have hope. Now, James says something similar in the book of James. He says, consider, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you feel you face trials of many kinds. Okay, I'm going to say that again because my mind is reading it. The Bible says it. But I'm like, what? Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. You may not be happy in the moment, but you can have the joy of understanding what God is allowing you to go through. He's going to use it for your good. He's going to use it to form you in his character. He's going to use it for his glory. It's not going to go to waste. It is not going to go to waste. So lemons in a biblical context should bring us closer to God and to maturing as his, as his people. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. We are not talking, again, about being positive thinkers. This is very important. We're not talking about being self-reliant. A lot of people use that phrase. Uh, optimists use that phrase, right? That, that phrase, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. But we're not talking about optimism. We're not talking about saying, hey, you just have to change your way of thinking and try harder and good things will happen. We're not talking about that. We're talking about what Paul says in Romans chapter 12, verse 21 that says, take captive every thought to make obedient to Christ. You can change your attitude all the way you want to. But if you don't change how you know what you know, let me tell you something. The attitude is going to go up and down like a roller coaster. The facts are the facts. They don't change. Remember the with Friday? Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. That's it. It's so very important. Now, how many of you remember Lord of the Rings? The Fellowship of the Ring? You can remember that? There's a scene there where Frodo says, now, he's facing dark times, you know? And um, Gandalf reminds Frodo that in the dark times, everyone has a choice. And this is what he says. He says, when Frodo, when Frodo says, I wish none of this had ever happened. That's what he says. Gandalf says, so do all who live to see such times. But it is not for them to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may mature and complete. Be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Perhaps the lemons that you have been given in this time of your life will help you to slow down from a busy schedule. 
maybe spend more time with God. I met with a sister yesterday who said, this time that I've had with such difficulty and such sorrow, I have spent more time talking to God, reading his word, and I'm encouraged that I am not alone. Perhaps the lemons that you're being given in this season in your life will help you to rethink priorities. I just saw one of those influencers on TikTok or something ask someone else, how, are your parents alive? And he says, yes. I said, well, how often do you see them? He says, oh, once, once or twice a year. Hmm. So you think your parents are going to be around for the next 10 years? He says, why? Because then you will only have seen your parents 10 times. If you think of it that way, you will realize, I'm going to see my parents every other month. See your parents once a year, twice a year? How do you know? How many more times will you have? So we rethink priorities. We rethink what really matters. You leave the dishes in the sink and have a conversation with the friend or the fence. I used to be like, oh, no, I can't. I have to clean my house. You know the greatest motivation for your house to get clean? Call your friend and say, I'll be over in 20 minutes. They'll clean their house. <laughs> I don't. Friendship is more important. The house is going to be there in 5, 10, 15 years. I'm not advocating for dirty houses. I'm just saying. Rethink what really matters. Perhaps it will help you to serve. How often have you not had a need in your life that will inspire you when you go through that situation to help someone else and serve someone else and help them with what you have learned? Definitely, if life in this season of your life have given you lemons, then pray for others who are going through the same thing you're going through. You're not alone. And finally, remember, lemons are an avenue for spiritual growth. So keep on keeping on. When life gives you lemons, don't give up. Persevere. I think I'll put a little more of that in here. So good. Allow God to grow you into the person he desires you to be. You and I can only do this. By putting our trust in God through his son, Jesus Christ. If you don't have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you cannot make a sweet lemonade out of your lemons. I know. Don't worry. You have your lemonades when you go out. William Mary said we have enough lemonade, right? If you have not ever made a decision to follow Jesus. If you've not ever made a decision to commit your life to doing things the Christ way, I will ask you that you will make that decision today. If you're connecting with us online, think, how can you go through the situation and the season you're in unless God, through his son, Jesus Christ, and his Holy Spirit allows you to hope in the God that does not allow you to be shamed? Because he's there for you. If you've never made a commitment to follow Jesus, I invite you to do that today. As a matter of fact, I know most of you, if not all of you here, have made that commitment. But let's just recommit ourselves to God. Let us say, Father, today I want to say, God, I recognize you as the creator of heaven and earth. Jesus, I recognize you as the son of God. So today... I say, Jesus, be my Lord and be my Savior. Come into my life. Forgive me of my sins. Help me to live a life that will honor you. Help me to live a life that will bring glory to you. And if you've made that decision for the first time, if you've made that commitment for the first time, we invite you to let us know. We want to come alongside of you in this journey of faith. Because you know what? Life is not meant to live alone. This is why God put us in family as brothers and sisters.
And if you've made that commitment as, a, as one who wants to follow Jesus and you have never made it public, well, today is a great opportunity for you to do that. We have a sister today, a baby sister because she's so much younger than me, who is going to make that commitment public through baptism. So I invite you to consider, if you're here today and you never made your faith public, today is a good day to do that. Amen? I'm going to ask Pastor Gary to come forward. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Marilyn. Thank you for that challenge. You can have some of my lemonade, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I want to share with you a little bit about what the Bible says about baptism. When I first became a Christian on November 1st, 1981, it was sometime in that next year that the church I attended at that time was, they, they challenged me about entering the waters of baptism. And to be honest, I struggled with that because I told him, hey, my parents baptized me as a child, so I really don't think that would be good for me to, like, insult them by getting baptized again. But then but they were very kind to show me what the Word of God says, and I want to share that with you here in uh, Matthew chapter 3. Let me see here. Yep. Chapter 3, starting at verse 13. Because when they showed me that Jesus did this, then I didn't have any more questions about it. And when Jesus entered the waters of baptism, he was 33 years old. I was 28. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to be baptized by John. But John tried to deter him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, Jesus, and do you come to me? And Jesus replied, Let it be so now. It is proper for us to do this to fulfill all righteousness and then John consented. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting or landing on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. When they showed me that, I didn't have any more resistance to entering the waters of baptism as an adult. Because every place in the Bible when it says, it says repent and be baptized. We cannot repent from our sins as a baby. We can do that as young children or as adults because we do understand what sin is. And we understand that we are caught in that, that sin nature. And that's why we put our faith in Jesus Christ because we need somebody to help us out when we have that sin nature attached to us. And so at that point, then, I entered the waters of baptism. And I didn't believe it then, but now, the, now I believe that it happened then to me, and it's going to happen today to those who enter the waters of baptism. Something happens over your life when you obey the scriptures in the area of entering the waters of baptism. It doesn't save you more. You're already in heaven because of your faith in Jesus Christ. You can't add to that. But by going public, it puts the kingdom of darkness on notice of that you recognize that you are no longer a citizen of the kingdom of darkness, but now you are a citizen of the kingdom of light. And that you have been transferred from a hopeless condition to one with immeasurable hope. And that's such an important place to be. And no matter how good I was, and I was a good person for the most part up till 28, no matter how good I was, I wasn't good enough to get into heaven. And I'm thankful that the Holy Spirit helped me to say, hey, I need to put my faith in Jesus Christ. And then a few months later to say, yes, I do want to enter the waters of baptism. It, again, it doesn't get you into heaven. Baptism doesn't. Because the, there were two thieves hanging on the crosses next to Jesus on each side. And he told the one who had faith in him, he said, today you will be with me in paradise. The guy didn't have to get off the cross and enter the waters of baptism in order to enter the kingdom of God. But those of us who are alive, it's a good thing to do. In our country, not a lot changes when you enter the waters of baptism. But in other countries, you're kicked out of your family, you're kicked, you lose your job, you're kicked out of your community, that a lot of things change when other people enter the waters of baptism. So I want to to let you know that as the heavens open up over those who enter the waters of baptism, there will be a voice. We may or may not hear it. There will be a voice that will say, 
This is my beloved son. This is my beloved daughter in whom I am well pleased. And something happens in the, over the spiritual atmosphere of your life. Amen. Are we looking good? We're looking good over here. I don't know if the cameras, if the cameras can be uh, refocused that in that direction. Otherwise, you're going to miss those of you online. You're going to miss it. But we're hoping to get the get that uh, to happen. Entering the waters now. Well, of course, Pastor Marilyn, and then Maria is Dahlia's mother. And uh, they are going to be baptizing Dahlia Aguilar. Aguilar. There we go. I want to say, it's, it, just, just, just one second. I don't know if you can see me over there, but I first met Dahlia in, in the fall of 2019, before the pandemic started. Okay. She happened to be the waitress at the Hotel Bethlehem where myself and two other people were meeting about some business matter. And uh, when she was waiting on us, and I think I asked her, well, what can we pray for you about? And then she told us, and then about two months later, we went back, and she was our waitress again. So I got a chance to talk to her again about that. And then after that, we developed a kind of a connection like, hey, it seemed like she might be interested in understanding a little bit more about, about God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. So over the next few months, you know, she started studying and, and getting into the things. She would sporadically come here, right? Yeah. And then uh, it, it so happened Then she started becoming more regular and, uh, once we reopened here a few months ago. And uh, her mom and her sister and uh, her special friend, who's a boy, uh, they have been also attending here. And Oh, and Josiah? Yes, it, which is her nephew is part of PM's uh, and the teen class back there, or the preteen class back there. Why do I tell you this? Because you don't know what little thing you do in the normal course of your daily activities that could change a person's life. You have, because you know Jesus Christ, you have that potential. And you just need to look for small opportunities. And then I didn't force her, I didn't, I didn't push her up against the wall and say, unless you accept Jesus, bad things are gonna happen to you. You know, but we allow the Holy Spirit to just do what he chooses to do in and when uh, in a person's life. So I'm very thankful for Dahlia, and she's a great waitress, but she's an even better person. And uh, I'm just going to... She could be my granddaughter. Yeah, she's a graduate from Moravian University about two or three years ago, and I think she's about 25 years old. She's a little younger than I was when I accepted the Lord. Pastor Robert has prepared the baptismal pool and he's made it nice and warm for you ladies. Now, I want to ask Dahlia, would you like to say something? You don't have to, but you're free to say something. She's okay. I'm okay. Okay, she says she's okay. You heard it. Okay, Dahlia Aguilar, based upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Her mother, Maria, has been praying for years for this moment. It's a great thing when a young person comes to faith in Jesus Christ. It changes the, changes the direction of their life. And I want to say that... Uh, One, one second, one second, one second. Dot, can, just one second, one second, please. Can, can I just have your attention a moment? Dahlia, the verse, the, the verse that the Lord gave me for you in this particular season of your life is found in, when, uh, in the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. I believe the Lord's going to give you a hunger for his word to, to know it and to study it, and then you will apply it to your life, and that will give you the righteousness. A righteous life is applying God's word to your life 
and to, to allowing him to have his way in your life. So I think you're going to start having a, a strong appetite for the word of God. Amen. Thank you. PM, did you have anything you want to say? Okay. We do have Amanda and Amanda... We have, we have Amanda Childs who would like to be baptized. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, that would be good. If, uh, if there's anyone else who feels the prompting of the Holy Spirit to enter the waters of baptism this morning and you have made a decision to put Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then we'd be happy to have you follow after Amanda. Now, Amanda, would you like to say anything? I'll hold the microphone. I'm a child of God. That's it. Okay. Amanda, based upon your profession... Amanda Childs, based upon your profession of faith in Jesus Christ, we now baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Woo! Amen. Congratulations, Amanda. For you have recognized that you're a child of God. Not only will you be, your name is written in the book of life, you are an heir of everything that God has for his children. All you have to do is reach out and grab it. He will provide a means for which you will be able to fulfill the call that he has on your life. He's not forgotten you. It's been years and years that he's spoken to your heart. And today you're saying, okay, God, I'm listening. And when you said that, the door is open. Thank you, Pastor Marilyn. Is there anyone else who has placed their faith in Jesus Christ, but they have never entered the waters of baptism and would like to do so this morning? Okay, we're not going to delay too long. We're going to go five, four. Is today your day? Three, two, one. Heavenly Father, we Yes. Amen. Okay, are we sure now? This is the last time. Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you for those who have gone public with their faith. They have made a public declaration of a personal decision. Father, we ask you to put your protection around them that the enemy may not come against them and his attempts to do so will be unsuccessful. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you will be careful to watch over them as precious children, just as you watch over us. We thank you, your blessings will fall upon them and they will mature in their love relationship with you very quickly. In Jesus' name, we bless them. Amen and amen. Amen. Pastor Marilyn, are you making your way over here? Yes. Yeah, I think so. Okay, well, you, you, you're pretty involved here today. I'm going to ask if Jeremy Lau would come forward. Jeremy has asked if we would pray and bless him as he's going. Uh, Most of you know Jeremy. He was our executive director, also helped us to launch the prayer center. And he's been attending as an uh, online congregant. 
And this past month, um, he wasn't happy with me. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but anyway, he uh, told us that he it was time for him to move on. And I always tell to people, when people move on to other congregations, they don't become our cousins. They continue to be our brothers. And we wanted to pray for him and bless him. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jeremy Lau. We thank you, Father, for his life is in your hands, that he is a competent minister of the word. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are faithful to watch over him, and we sent him with your blessings, Father, in this new chapter of his life. We ask, Heavenly Father, you just continue to guide and direct him. We know his heart is inclined towards you, and we thank you, Heavenly Father, you will use him day after day, year after year, for your glory. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that his words will be seasoned with grace. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that he, as a humble servant of the Almighty One, Father, will find great favor with you in the days ahead. We bless him now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Jeremy, I wanted to, to share with you uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 3 to 6. You're a fine young man. And here, Paul, what Paul wrote, I'm, I'm saying to you this morning. I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, or for you, Jeremy, I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it out to completion until the day of Jesus Christ. You're always going to be part of our family. You've helped you helped us amazingly with the transition from El Shaddai Bethlehem to the Central Lehigh Valley. And we, we want to be thankful for that. What you've done here, others will build on. But what you've done has been really important. So thank you for that. Did you want to say anything? I just want to say that, you know, even though I am moving on to a new church home, this is always family. You know, family, when we grow up, we leave the home, but we never leave family. And I am so incredibly thankful for both you and PM, knowing that family means no one gets left behind, nobody gets forgotten. And I'm so thankful to you all here at TCLV for being my family, for better, for worse, for thick and thin. And I just pray that the Lord would continue to bless you and keep you and cause his face to shine upon you. I was going to say, and I had no idea Pastor Gary was going to write, read that Bible verse. I'm going to say, I'm so glad that you're still a work in progress and that God will complete that when he started in you. We love you. And, you know, we always going to ask you, how can we pray for you? Amen. God bless you. Thank you, Jesus. I'd, I'd like to call now if Peter would come forward. Although Peter did not write us an email, <laughs> we know that he's also moving on. We just wanted to pray for you and bless you and thank God for you being part of this congregation. And the same thing, you know, God is one who works masterpieces and he's working. We don't know Peter as well as we do Jeremy, but uh, we're thankful for his participation here in, in these last few years. Heavenly Father, we thank you. You'll continue to guide and bless Peter as he goes, Father, to this new chapter of life. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that his ear is attentive to the voice of your Holy Spirit. And we ask, Heavenly Father, that he just, like each one of us, that he just continues to give himself over to you every part of his life. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you will find him to be a faithful servant, a faithful son of the Most High. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that your angelic protection will surround him all the days of his life. And we send him with our blessings, with our prayers, with our hopes, and in putting him into your hands this morning, Lord. We bless him now in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Did you want to say something? just wanted to say thank you to everyone for being so welcoming and I'm going to miss coming here and seeing everyone but it's still home even though we're moving on. Well you ever get back back here why you're welcome. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Amen.
amen. I think that's it, except for just a quick announcement or two. On July 23rd, the Sanctuary of Hope is having the Chats in Hats Backyard Brunch. It starts at noon on July 23rd. All the single ladies, all the single ladies. That's right, and their married friends. I had a single lady invite me, so I'm coming. So if you plan on going, text HATS, H-A-T-S, to 610-365-7999. That's right here next to this building behind that, uh, uh, the Center of Hope. So it's going to be in the outside, but you have to wear your hats. There you go. And the, the other announcement I want to give you is July 31st is the fifth Sunday of, of this month. And that's where we go to TCLV in action. And we put our faith into action, and we are asking if you would be able to donate items for children, such as baby clothes, formula, diaper wipes, and diapers, wipes, and other kids' supplies. And if you have any donations, you can text that word DONATE to 610-365-7999 and schedule a time to drop those things off. Also, to volunteer for that, if you sign up on the Church Center app or text ACTION to that same number, 610-365-7999, then we'll know that you're going to participate. And if you can't remember any of that, just text, I don't remember anything, to 610-365-7999, and we'll get back to you, okay? 610-365-7999. That pretty much covers it. Well, we, we trust that you've been blessed today. We hope that we've blessed the Lord in our time together. And we ask you to stand as we send you with a blessing. And with a lemonade. Don't forget to give up your lemonade on your way out. Get your cup of lemonade on the way out there, please. Father, we send your people with your blessings. And we ask that you would bless them and keep them. That you would make your face to shine upon them. That you would be gracious to each one of them and give them your peace. We send them in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. And and remember, be the light. Be the light. God bless you.